question is that the document be noted, and I call the member for Dunkley. Thank you very much, Deputy Speaker. Um, I rise to give note to this report. Uh, on the weekend, um, somewhat to my surprise, I was privileged to be invited to a family celebration of a family I had never met before. Uh, the Joseph family invited me to their barbecue at Ballam Park in Frankston to celebrate 50 years since the Joseph siblings came to Australia. Their family's from initially from India, uh, and they had uh, lived and worked in Karachi. Uh, and uh, because of disruption um, and war uh, and economic uh, circumstances in India and Pakistan, they had to flee, and they came to Australia. Fifty years later, they are the picture of multicultural Australia. Um, they have members of their family who are descended from India, from Pakistan, from Sri Lanka. Um, they've got German heritage, Croatian heritage, Irish heritage. They are a big, happy, loving, wonderful Australian migrant story. And that's what's really important about this country, is that we do have a very welcoming approach to migration, and we should always, always have an incredibly welcoming approach to migration. We also need to make sure that people who are in Australia now have the skills and the training to be able to get the jobs that exist now and the jobs that are going to exist in the future. There's more than 1.3 million Australians on either job seeker or the soon to be returned to New Start at $43.75 a day or youth allowance. There's more than 2 million Australians who are either looking for work or for more work. We live in a country where over the last eight years under this Liberal government, some $3 billion has been cut from TAFE and training system, and apprenticeships have been lost. We know because of this report that we also live in a country where there are significant skill shortage in various industries. Um, and those of us that talk to employers and young people and workers in our electorates know that there is a skills shortage. I mean, before I entered this parliament, I was on the board of Peninsula Health and I was shocked at one of the meetings to hear that we were advertising in the UK for mental health nurses because we couldn't get Australian trained mental health nurses for the hospital. I, that just should never be the case. I mean, we have magnificent medical practitioners at Frankston Hospital and Peninsula Health, who have come from all over the world. And when I think about uh, the people that work there, um, Shri Kanth, um, the amazing uh, medical research uh, director who came from India, for example, I am so pleased that we have people from all over the world working in our health system um, in Frankston. Um, but it cannot be the case that because we can attract the best talent, we neglect to train up our own people at the same time. It should not be the case that we have 40,000 Australians stranded overseas wanting to come home, and yet we have a government that is looking to weaken labour market testing, to expand the number of occupations on the skill shortage list, to include chefs, veterinarians, cafe managers, seafarers, motor mechanics, cooks, carpenters, electricians and other hospitality roles. Each of those occupations are pretty popular occupations in Dunkley. Seafarers, we don't have as many as some other electorates, that's true. But each of the others are pretty popular occupations in Dunkley. And yet we're not training up our own people enough so that they can get the jobs that they need. It's an indictment on the failure of this government to properly appreciate the role of skills of traineeships and, most importantly, the public's TAFE system over the eight years in which it's been the government. The approach to skill shortages needs to be 
training up Australian workers and then turning to fill skill gaps with overseas workers, while at the same time attracting the best and brightest to come and work here. That's a comprehensive approach. You know, this is a government that by stealth is pretty happy for our public TAFE system to be outsourced and privatised. And we've seen it happen with employment services and there's not a day go by that my electorate office doesn't have a constituent contact my office about difficulties with their job service provider, some of whom are, most of whom are staffed by magnificent people, but the privatised system isn't working for the people that need the help. TAFE is fundamentally important to my community. Frankston TAFE and now the Chisholm Institute is at the heart geographically of Frankston, and it's now a magnificent heart of Frankston thanks to hundreds of millions of dollars of investment from the state Labor government with a, a building and training facilities that are second to none anywhere. It's also at the heart of the future of many of the constituents in my electorate. And we're really proud of it, and I thank the Deputy Leader of the Opposition and Shadow Minister for National Reconstruction, who came with me recently um, to see what a first-class public TAFE and training facility really should look like. But we need this government to act now. We can't wait for a Labor government, but I can tell you a federal Labor government would be investing and supporting public TAFE at the heart of a skills and training system. TAFE is a public institution at its heart. We need a strong and sustainable public network of regionally accessible, world-class vocational education and training. We need an active industry policy that doesn't exist at the moment under this government, that is good for the economy and good for industry and trains up and supports our people to work in the industries of the future. We have to have education and trading providers, industry, federal and state governments working together for a training system. And I commend to this government recent reviews undertaken in both New South Wales and Victoria uh, by, um, in addition to other people, uh, Jenny Macklin, who was, you know, one of the best policy thinkers in this federal parliament before she left. It is now one of the best policy thinkers not in this federal parliament in the whole country. Look at those reports and actually consider what a holistic, properly constructed skills and training program looks like, remembering that the Productivity Commission is wrong and public TAFE has to be at the heart of it. Thank you.